Hey guys, this will be the uh, first video in the series about my various radiation detectors. I figured I would start with the simplest one, um, and this is a my Beery 2-1. Um, you can find them for like 30 to 40 bucks on eBay, eh, and they're really simple. Um, they take two coin cells that are kind of hard to track down, um, but if you would like to know where to buy them, um, just let me know, and I can actually tell you there's an eBay seller out of Salt Lake City, Utah that has them. So that's kind of cool. Um, but anyway, um, this is a really, really simple device. Um, essentially, it has a power switch. It's the only control on it. And it has an LED and a buzzer. And basically, all it does is does one beep per detection event. Um, the only thing I really use this for is just, like, identifying things that are decently strong beta and, and or gamma emitters, um, so, like when I'm searching for antiques or something. Um, but anyway, it's been modified. I cut a window out of the front near the Geiger tube with a hot knife. Uh, and the reason I did that is to th reduce the thickness of the plastic shielding the uh, Geiger Mueller tube. I wanted weaker betas to be able to set off the tube or set off the detector. So I cut it out and I um, used some super glue to um, um, seal this up to prevent like keys or change or something from denting the Geiger Mueller tube and shorting things out or damaging it and also to keep moisture and dust out. But I'll just demo how this thing works real quick. So let's say I've got this chalice which is uranium glass. See that? Yeah, it's definitely picking up more like it's beeping faster than it would with nothing there, right? So that's generally how it works. Um, you can actually turn this into what people would consider a Geiger counter. Um, really, when people say Geiger counter, usually it means um, what's called a rate meter. It'll give you like counts per minute of detection events, right? So it's, if that light blinks five times a minute in like 60 seconds, then you have five counts per minute. It's really, really simple. Um, and using a dorky instrument like this, a timer, and the, and the uh, Geiger counter, you can actually use this as a rate meter. Um, and it would only work well with like lower activity sources where you can actually like click this once per detection event. Um, if it goes too fast or is full on, then you know, you're know you not gonna get anything resembling an accurate reading. But um, in order to use this as a counter, what I would do is leave this thing running, set a timer for a minute, and just let it sit there on its side or something. Um, and I happen to know that this guy gets two counts per minute for background usually. So you take the number of counts per minute with, your, with when it's not near your source, and then you like you know put it up to your source. I'm just going to put it in here so it'll go off a lot. But once you've done that and you count all these up, um, you subtract that number of counts in a minute from the number of counts you got for background, and that should give you a decent idea of how many counts your source is producing. Um, and I've actually done this already with a um, granite bar top at a bar that I frequent. And I got two counts per minute background radiation there. I just measured for 60 seconds, and on the more inner, or on the hotter spots on the granite, I got 11 counts per minute measured. So what I would do is I would take the 11 counts I got, Subtract two from them and get nine. And I know that that spot on the granite's producing nine counts per minute. Pretty simple. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how, that's one way you could use this besides just going, oh, this thing's radioactive, you know. Granted, if you put it up to a sample like this, which is a particularly hot radium watch, it'll just kind of go bonkers. And you obviously can't use that to do counts. But you do know that it's uh, producing a fair amount of radiation. Anyways, yeah, and another note on this, by the way. Um, the Geiger tube's really small, so this thing isn't that sensitive. Um, the bigger surface area of the probe, generally, the better. Um, there's other mitigating factors, like what kind of particles can it detect, what energy levels can it detect, and a lot of that has to do with the... Uh, the chemistry of the Geiger tubes. Um, in fact, I don't know if I mentioned this, but this one is a Russian SBM-21 tube, and you can actually look those up on the internet, um, and you can get the spec sheets for them. But they don't... I've never seen an energy um, response curve graph for one of these, so I can't tell you how good it is at detecting things at various energy levels. So, 
But anyway, so that's sort of the basics on this guy. Um, I'll definitely come up with another one. Uh, well, I'll do another video on the next detector later, which is also a Soviet one that uses SBM 21 or SBM 20, SBM 20. I think are SBM 21 tubes, which are or SBM 20 tubes, which are in the same family as this guy. Anyway, have a good one, and I'll see you at the next video.